So this video is going to be about impulse and how to build an impulse drum machine instrument. First off, um, we're going to add in a... Uh, actually, you know, we don't even need to add in a MIDI channel because if we just go to live devices, which is this icon right here, right below the triangle, uh, up on the left, and go to instruments and just drag in the impulse right into the empty area here it will create its own MIDI channel um, and the MIDI from is all ends and the audio is going to the master and so um, I would like you to build a impulse instrument from the contact uh, piece here I'm sorry, contrapunct piece, not contact, that's another piece of his. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, copy a full version, this one right here. So I'm going to option, click, and drag, and that makes a copy. And I'm just going to drag it over here. And I'm going to use this copy specifically to make um, impulse uh, sounds. Um, and the way to do that is simply by uh, finding any, any area here and moving the start position to that area. Um, let's, just, let's just move all of this here and... Okay, so what I just did was I selected all and then uh, command L is loop. So the whole thing is, is selected. But now I'm just going to drag the start uh, arrow. So I'm just going to look to see, oh that looks interesting, let's see what that is right there. And play that. There we go. Okay, so then I'm going to go to the impulse. You have to double click on this to get the instrument. And then just drag this clip right to this spot. And now whenever that... Okay, and then we're going to find another one to the same place, the same clip go to another another start point. Let's see how that is. Okay, well that's good enough for now. Um, double click here and drag this uh, with this new start point. Even though it's the same clip, it has a different starting point. So that is starting point is going to be written in stone, so to speak. So we have that starting point and this one there. So even though it's the same clip, uh, once it's put into impulse, it's set at the start point that I uh, attributed um, at that mo at that point. So even if I move to another start point, the impulse uh, clips are not going to move. They're going to stay where I had them before. So let's go back to here. Double here. Let's let's zoom in a little bit so we can get um, more precise. Uh, let's do that one right there. Drag this on over. We can also, once we highlight the, um, the this little this arrow here, we can also use the arrows on the keyboard to move it. So at the moment, I'm not clicking anything. I'm moving the left arrow, and that is moving the clip. And here I'm moving the right arrow, and that's moving it along. Um, that only happens first. You have to um, actually click on the arrow there to actually get it to move, otherwise it won't. It'll move something else. So, um, let's see, that looks interesting. Let's try that. Yeah, that's cool. Let's get the impulse back. Drag this over here. So now we have, and then these are the arrow. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds cool. Okay, so, um, you can continue doing, doing, uh, getting those instances of uh, contrapunct up on these to fill out these eight slots. Now, as I mentioned in the class, impulse on the on a, the computer on the regular music keyboard only runs from middle C to octave above middle C, um, and so you want to get the computer keyboard going. So, to do that, you have to highlight the 
music the piano keyboard button and then if you press X on the keyboard you will see down here it'll tell you what octave you're in. X is going to take it up an octave see there we go computer keyboard your current octave is now C5 to C6 I want it C3 so the Z key is or if you're Canadian the Z key goes down an octave here we go C, C1, C2 and the X key goes up an octave as you can see right there if you're looking right there so we want to set it to C3 to D4 and then if I press the A key uh, the letter A key on the computer keyboard it'll be this instance of course I have to arm this uh, this channel of course and let's bring this back up and there it is so that's the computer key A this is the computer key S this is the computer key D so um, and then once you have these things for each uh, instance here for each um, uh, slot you have these these controls are unique for each slot so if you want um, so I found that the this one here is too quiet so I'm going to bring the volume of this up and here's the volume so I'm going to bring that up there we go and then what's that? And that's too quiet too so let's click on that now if you keep an eye on this volume knob you will see as a fact for a fact that this slot here has its own setting so because it went back to zero so I'm going to bring this up just a little bit Uh, and of course you can do that with every slot that you've loaded in here and then so the other controls let's go to this one you can change the start uh, position of that clip so let's see what we have that's and by milliseconds so it's not as full as a, as the full clip but it's by milliseconds here Yeah, transpose is by half steps. Uh. And stretch. Uh. Yeah, if I wanted to stretch it out, make it sl uh, make it slower, but of course keep the same key, same pitch. And it's a kind of a and you can also make it condense it and then we have decay you can make it more percussive by shortening it so that's very short and then of course pan it as well and then you can have um, velocity how, how it responds to to uh, key velocity uh, just as in the clip clip areas here, trigger, gate, toggle, etc., we also have that in impulse, gate, and trigger. Uh, so basically, that's I'm keeping the key down, and then it's going to stop when I bring the key up. So same for any of these. So at the moment, the trigger is just I'm keep keeping the key down; it's just stopping. Uh, this is the gate. So, and then keep, I'm keeping the key down, then lift the key up. So while I was rendering uh, that video, I went ahead and made some changes here. Um, so let's listen to what I turned it into here. So what I did there was... Um, was I changed uh, as I added in this saturation. Let's uh, let's try this one here, which is let's try it without saturation. It just sounds normal, so that adds a bit of distortion. And then I also brought it down an octave, um, made it more interesting, and uh, I also changed some of the filter settings here. So if you turn the filter on. 
can change, you can filter out some of the highs. And there's the resonant, reson, resonant filter as well. We'll be getting into that when we talk about synthesizers. But that's just more ways that you can uh, sculpt each of these sounds. Um, and if you have a, um, a keyboard that has velocity, that's what these things are here. You can actually ascribe uh, velocity. Um, you can control the tra each of these uh, aspects with velocity. Uh, uh, when you're using the computer keyboard in live, they actually have some settings where you can change the um, the the velocity of the note because otherwise, you know, usually with the piano keyboard, if you hit the key harder, that's a higher velocity. If you play it softer, that's softer velocity. Um, so live uh, was nice enough to build those into the actual keyboard, and you can do that with the C and the V key on the uh, computer keyboard. You can look down here. You'll see that. You are currently playing with velocity of six, of 80, 60, 40, and then I'm going to use the V key and bring the velocity up. So let's say I wanted to uh, bring the velocity, have the the transposition transposition controlled by velocity. Um, so if I hit the V key, it's going to increase the velocity, and so it's going to increase the transposition. And I'd be able to be to do that if I had a uh, a velocity sensitive keyboard. I'd be able to do that just by hitting hitting it louder, hitting it harder or softer. In fact, you can also do that with the stretch. You have velocity control over the stretch, and the pan, and the individual volume, which is which is what uh, velocity usually controls. These three knobs here are for all eight. Uh, slots. So this is the overall volume, the overall time, which is another word for stretch, but stretch is per slot, and time is for all the slots, and then a transposition for all the slots. Okay, let's say we like these sounds and we want to create our own uh, little riff with these sounds. It's just the same as we did with um, recording audio. We're just going to click right here and um, and we'll be able to record um, MIDI information into this uh, MIDI instrument. So we're going to click on this and start playing. And we'll be able to see it. And you can see I'm changing velocity, those little So now we have a and we can treat that just the same as we did the um, audio clips. We have the start point here. We have a loop point here. We want to just loop one specific little riff. Then if you want to drag that loop someplace else, keep the same time, you just get that little icon there, move it over. And so that becomes a clip here. And you can use that uh, with the audio clips, and you can also um, uh, assign it to a computer key and play it just like you would any other audio clip. Let's do that. U. So, I take the key off. Now whenever I hit U, I'm going to hit that. And of course I have the computer keyboard icon off because we're not playing it as an instrument right now. We're playing, it, we're playing the clips. So I'm going to start and turn the volume down. So we can add that into our improvisation.